Hello and welcome to the Vaults of Terror. My name is Ed and today we're going to be continuing with our Horus Heresy videos with a quick look at the Battle of Cygnus Prime. Prior to the Battle of Istvan III, Horus began dispatching the Loyalist Legions who he knew couldn't or wouldn't join his cause, setting traps for them using his Chaos-granted knowledge to direct them into the path of greatest harm. He hoped these legions would either be destroyed or too bogged down to assist the Imperium once the heresy began. One of these trap campaigns was aimed at the Blood Angels and their Primarch Sanguinius. One of Horus' closest brothers, his attitude had greatly changed now that Horus had joined Chaos. Before his fall to Chaos, Horus had thought Sanguinius better for the role of Warmaster than himself. This fearful and vaguely jealous thought had assisted in his downfall. Now Horus had nothing but contempt for his one-time brother and had devised a fiendish trap. With the assistance of the word bearer's first chaplain Erebus, Horus had decided to try and use the gene flaw of the Blood Angels, known as the Red Thirst, to turn the Blood Angels Legion to the worship of the Chaos God Khorne, sometimes known as the Blood God. However, the Chaos forces could not agree on how they were going to accomplish this. Some wanted to convert Sanguinius to the side of Chaos as well, whilst others, including Horus, held that he was too loyal to the Emperor and should be removed whilst his sons would be given to Khorne and become part of Horus' force. Forces. In reality, Horus saw Sanguinius as his main rival, and feared that if Sanguinius converted, he would be the one who would have the favour of the Chaos Gods, not Horus. To begin their plan, Horus dispatched a detachment of word bearers to inform the Blood Angels that their next assignment was in the Cygnus Cluster, which Horus claimed was under the control of tyrannical Xenos overlords known as the Nephilim. He also claimed that the Nephilim may hold some technology that would remove the Red Thirst from the Blood Angels, one of Sanguinius' greatest desires. With no reason to distrust his brother's orders, Sanguinius immediately moved the Blood Angels' forces to this region of space ready to make war against the Nephilim and find a cure for his sons. Before Sanguinius even arrived, the Cygnus system under Horus' orders was invaded and conquered by a vast horde of demons under the command of Keeper of Secrets, Chris the Perverse. When the Blood Angels finally arrived in the cluster, they found they could not escape, as a strange shadowy film had covered space preventing their return to the warp. They discovered wrecked vessels destroyed apparently fleeing the system, filled with corrupted bodies. Upon arriving on one of the outer planets known as Holst, they found the world dead and strangely corrupted with hive cities themselves attacking the Blood Angels with weird metal constructs and strange poisons. The planet was subject to an exterminatus unable to be conquered by mere flesh and steel, and the Blood Angels moved on. As they moved further into the system, some sort of strange corruption began to enter the minds of the non-Astartes personnel in the fleet, driving some of them mad, forcing the iron-willed Astartes to put them down before they damaged the fleet. Those the Space Marines did not attend to committed suicide, their minds unhinged by the power of chaos flowing through the system. Moving at battle speed towards the system's capital of Cygnus III, also known as Cygnus Prime, the Blood Angels raced to discover why this system was under such strange conditions. After arriving at Cygnus Prime, the full power of the warp was focused on the fleet. Most of the remaining sane non-Astartes crew were now driven insane, having to be detained by the Blood Angels, or killing each other in a savage bout of battle rage. As this happened, Chris the Perverse sent a psychic image of itself to the much aggrieved Sanguinius, taunting him to attack. Then, the commander of Sanguinius' flagship went insane, and tried to crash the ship into Cygnus Prime. Sanguinius took control from his now insane admiral and was able to emergency land his flagship on the planet. With barely contained anger, Sanguinius now unleashed the full force of his legion on Cygnus Prime against the enemies they now found there. Sanguinius led from the fore, assaulting the enemy's HQ directly with his elite guard. Their enemy revealed themselves as the Blood Angels landed as a vast horde of demons and chaos cultists, meeting the Blood Angels head-on with an insane fury of the warp. The enemy were based around a building known as the Cathedral of the Mark, a vast edifice dedicated to the chaos gods. Here Chris commanded the demonic hordes, and it was here that the resistance to the Blood Angels was the strongest. As Sanguinius approached the cathedral, he was met by a huge winged demon the colour of dried blood. This was Kabanda, a greater demon of corn, also known as a bloodthirster. The bloodthirster tried to sway Sanguinius to Khorne's banner as his sons began to lose themselves to the fury of battle, claiming even his brother Horus had joined Chaos and battled against the Imperium. However, Sanguinius could not be swayed, calling the demon a liar and jumping into combat with the bloodthirster. 
He badly wounded the greater demon, but was caught by the demon's whip and cast to the ground, his legs crushed and broken. Helpless Sanguinius was forced to watch as Campandra turned and killed 500 of his sons using a power known as the Rage Fire, which had originally helped corrupt the planet, and was intended to be used to try and corrupt Sanguinius. The nature of this death of his sons was so violent that the psychic backlash knocked Sanguinius unconscious and forced a dark seed into the hearts of the Blood Angels, a corruption that they would bear for all time, the Black Rage. As the rage consumed the Blood Angels, they turned from warriors into insane berserkers. As their Primarch fell unconscious, they renewed their attack with unexpected fury, disregarding tactics and ignoring all wounds to rip their enemies apart with gun and blade and bare hand. Even the few Space Wolves attached to the Legion and observing the Blood Angels, although they were taking part in the battle, were ripped apart by the fury of the Blood Angels, the Blood Angels no longer able to distinguish friendly forces from foes. Only a few former librarians resisted resisted the rage, but the rest were consumed. Sanguinius' inhuman healing skill meant that not long after he fell unconscious he awoke and his legs were mostly healed, and his mind was clear. Seeing his sons lost to the thirst and the rage, Sanguinius knew that he had to end the battle as soon as possible. He engaged Cabander in combat again, and was able to banish the demon, who vowed vengeance on the wounded angel as he was returned to the warp. In the meantime, the rage of the Blood Angels was enough to drive the demons and the cultists off and kill many of them, sending the rest back to the warp and purging the planet of this taint. Only once every single enemy was slain did the Blood Angels return to their senses and realise what had gripped them. Even in the dying moments of the battle, a demon Chris the Perverse still hoped to turn Sanguinius to chaos. He offered Sanguinius salvation and freedom from the Red Thirst for his men if he personally took the rage fire into him, becoming possessed by chaos. Sanguinius, wanting to see his sons freed from the thirst above all things, was going to accept this deal when an apothecary known as Meros beat him to it and stepped into the rage fire first, preventing Sanguinius from being possessed and sacrificing himself to prevent his lord from doing the same. Meros was transformed into the Red Angel and dispatched into the warp, and Chris was banished back to the warp by his masters for failure to convert Sanguinius. The Blood Angels left the now deserted world shortly after the battle concluded, raising Sanguinius' flagship and departing the Cygna system with a dark shadow across their hearts, forever tainted by the battle fought here. In the aftermath, it was discovered that whilst the Blood Angels had been bogged down in this system, the vast work of the heresy had occurred across the Imperium. Travel was now treacherous due to warp storms raging, and the Blood Angels spent much time trying to navigate back to friendly territory. For Horus, strangely, this was his first major defeat, his demonic army at Cygnus crushed, and the Blood Angels still remaining whole and loyal to the Imperium, regardless of their feelings on the matter. The enemy had overcome all his forces, and it was the first sign that Chaos could be defeated. When Erebus blamed Horus for the plan's failure, the Warmaster was purportedly so enraged that he flayed the skin off Erebus's face with his own hands. So that's everything I have to say today on the Battle of Cygnus Prime, I hope it was useful. Just so you know, the final episode in this season of my Dark Heresy games will be going up on the 5th of December on Twitch, so if you want to see that there, please come and watch us live. Anyway, that's all I have to say today, see you next time on the Vaults of Terror.